this is the 5075S. We looked at this board way back last year and it was supposed to be the best budget 75% mechanical keyboard of 2022, with the only drawback being the two glaring issues, its own ACO software and the north facing configuration. Now it's back in my hands ready for a second round of testing. But this time, they finally fixed the problems I once had with the first model. But the question is, is it too little too late or is this a new budget 75% of 2023? Let's find out. The 5075S is sent over by Ako for an honest review, and as always, my opinions are my own. Going past through the unboxing, if you've seen my video on the 5075S, you'll see the same contents as this one and that one. And all the dimensions, sizes, designs, and features are the same. So let's focus on something far more substantial to you. What changes did they made and is it enough? For context, this is Aku's budget take on a 75% keyboard with an exploded layout. It comes around 3,000 pesos for both white and black variant, but looking around it, it seems that the Starry Night variant is gone now. Hopefully, Ako brings it back along with the pink one. What sets this apart from the old one is the new PCB, which supports B out of the box and is south facing by design. First up is BIA compatibility. For newcomers into the hobby, BIA is an open source, cross platform firmware editor for keyboards that uses QMK firmware. It allows users to customize their keyboards by remapping keys creating macros, and adding layers. BIA is a web app, so it can be used on any device with a web browser. With this, I got an early unit, and it seems like they're currently in the works of adding this to the native BIA app. But for now, it works with Aqua's fork of it, that I'll link below. This is huge, as having BIA compatibility now enables you to easily add macros, change up layers, as well as remap keys with a breeze without even flashing your keyboard for every change. The second change was the move from north facing to south facing sockets. Again, if you're new to the hobby, let me explain it to you. North facing switch interference is a phenomenon that occurs when north facing switches are used with cherry propel keycaps. Cherry propel keycaps are designed to be used with south facing switches, and when they are used on north facing switches, the top of the keycaps can come into contact with the top housing of the switch before the switch is able to bottom out. This can cause an unwanted pinging sound and a change in the feel of the typing experience. I have a full video on this and how you can remedy it, but rest assured, this issue is non-existent on this new model. The only drawback to this is that your shine through keycaps wouldn't work properly on this, but I'd happily take that drawback for a wider keycap compatibility. In my view, I think it's a substantial enough change to warrant a successor from the previous 5075S. But how does it stack up against the competition? Well, here's Lucas to help you with that. Hey, what is up going guys? My name is Lucas from Gancho Keys. Right off the bat, it's really interesting that 5075 is finally taking a step into the world of VIA as well. For newbies, things can get pretty confusing once entering into the hobby. Aside from which keyboard you want, you'd also have to consider which keyboard layout is the one for you. Looking over the budget range of the 75s, you have a lot of boards to choose from, with the likes of Keychron V1, Techware Veil 80, Lychee G80, MG75, Rock Hanan, Faker Aki 75, and the list goes on and on. But in some ways, the 50 75 hits a home run for me because not only you're getting VIA support, but also have a gasket mount system, contrary to Keychron V1, albeit that supports VIA as well, but it comes only with a tray mounting system. The 5075 will definitely provide you that soft typing experience with the included plate. In hindsight, based on the layout, this boards are pretty much exactly similar. You have a number of keys that range between 80 to 84 with the inclusion of a volume knob. Second, as far as our features are concerned, it's really up to you whether you need wireless connectivity or not at all. And lastly, design. It's pretty much objective at that point on what kind of design you like for your keyboard that will match your desk setup. Alright, that is it for me. Big thanks to Kavita Tech for allowing me to take part on this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.
Again, big shoutouts to Lucas for helping me with this one. You could check his channel out for more on this. And if you're lost on Akko's lineup, he has a video on that as well. Now that's out of the way, let's hear the board stock with Akko Cream Blue Pros. I built this complete stock without mods to see what it's like out of the box. I use Cream Blue Pros and Akko's Mars Green keycaps, which are Akko's new Cherry Propal keycaps that are double shot ABS and it looks so nice with a clean legending and a nice colorway. I use this set as it matches the black white well and to emphasize the new PCB. Again, I didn't modify this and the stabs were stuck as well. From my point, it sounds alright for the most part, with a little bit of rattling on the two use tab keys. But again, you can mod this to any way, shape, or form you want, just like what I did with the last 5075. Going into the conclusion, the 5075S refresh is something I didn't expect from Apple. Even though the 5075 was selling hotcakes, they redesigned the PCB to fit the norm and the standards of a higher end board. This is a nice gesture from them that shows that they're listening to user and reviewer feedback and are willing to adapt to what we want. This board for 2,000 pesos or about 50 US, I say, is a bang for the buck if you're new to the hobby and want to tinker with keyboards on the cheap. How about you? What do you think of the new 5075S? Let me know down below. I'm Johan J. Bimaba and I'll see you in the next video.